everybody doing tonight, all right? It's a quiet group, Mom. Quiet. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. I got to ask you guys a question. When you think about the perfect picture of New England, right? You know, that New England thing, other than, like, the lighthouse. What do you guys think about? See? Everybody right away, it's food. That's how I think, too. That's exactly what I think. I think about lobster and blueberries from Maine, right? I know. Oh, yeah, babe. Like clams, you know, from, like, Ipswich, right, or Nantucket. Scallops from New Bedford. A couple of pool tables, Mabel, but anyhow. Uh, just kidding. Makes me homesick thinking about it a little bit, you know? Now I'm down in New Orleans, and it's a different deal, you know? It's crawfish and gumbos and all that wonderful, beautiful stuff. But I really miss a lot of those dishes from my childhood. So, tonight, we're kicking New England up a few notches right here, folks, all right? I'm going to start. I'm going to start with some of these baked clams that have, like, this pimento butter. I don't know. Some people call them clams casino. I don't know where the casino came in, but sure wasn't rocking my machine. But anyhow. <laughs> and then one of my favorite dishes, salt cod and lobster cakes. I'm going to show you how to make a classic tartar sauce. We'll do a little sweet corn relish with that just to kick it up a little bit. And then how about a slice of blueberry jam custard pie? You ever have that? Oh, yeah, baby. Get ready. New England and New England Fair right here. Emerald Live! haven't figured it out by now, Doc Gibbs and Cliff are in the house. All right. How you guys doing? Hello, pretty girl. How are you? Hi there. How are you? You guys doing all right? Smelling a little fishy over here, isn't it? <laughs> I promise you it'll get better, though. We love you love fish? <laughs> Me too. You got to have fish in your diet. So uh, let's just go kind of go up the line over here a little bit and talk a little bit about some of this New England food stuff. We're very blessed, you know, because um, it wasn't until we really started uh, thinking about doing this show and we kind of get a lot of those inspirations from you guys, that WW dot thing and those letters and postcards and all that kind of stuff. And beside growing up there and loving the food, I guess one of the newest things right now is that it's a wonderful dairy area, right? A lot of dairy cows. That equates to being a great cheese-making area as well. And you think about now these little cheeseries, uh, you know, fromageries that are opening in New England, all over the place, upstate New York and Massachusetts, Vermont, producing these great cheeses because of the great, uh, you know, dairy states. Big egg state, particularly for brown eggs. Prefer brown eggs than, than really with the white eggs. So they're really particular about that. Cranberries, they're blessed with that, you know, in Cape Cod with cranberry bogs. 80%, 85% of the cranberries in the United States come from that area about this time of the year as well. Of course, sweet corn and Johnny cakes and things like that. Use a lot of beets, a lot of cabbage. I guess that's just where it comes from. A lot of bacon or the pork fat thing, you know, it's just... Uh, I, I can, you know, remember my mom using salt pork in just about everything that you could imagine. Uh, great sausages. You know, really, when the colonists settled there, the basis of it was mixed with, you know, the Native American Indians, Anglo-Saxon. That was really the f foundation of New England fare. And then, as the 1600s, close to the 1700s came, with the intense population of the Italian immigrants and the Portuguese immigrants, that really changed, that just busted up the cuisine to no end. And that's when you started getting injected a lot of the 
sausages, both Italian and Portuguese sausages, the different chorizos, linguices. And I guess one of the greatest things that it's blessed with is the fish and shellfish, right? I mean, lobsters like we talked about in Maine. Uh, in Maine, they also have the only bellon, which is a true French oyster that uh, was seeded, and it works, and it's fan they're fantastic. The bellon oysters from Maine. And along the Cape, you've got Wellfleet and all those kind of oysters there, and the beautiful clams, cherry stones and little necks, coags, mussels. One of my favorite fish. When's the last time you guys have had a piece of haddock? Not cod, but haddock. The difference is that, you see that stripe that goes right down the side of the back right there? Can you see that, folks? That's, a, that's the difference between, I, I mean, there's a little bit in flesh, but... That's really the outside difference between a haddock and a codfish. A codfish wouldn't have that. A haddock does. And, of course, salt cod, which is what I grew up on. So we come back. Some New England fare. I'm going to do this incredible clam dish. Doc Gibbs and Cliff, stick around. We'll be right back. Everything is good, man. This guy's kind of hanging over here. I'm just uh, hanging I'm out. I'm going to go make up some, some of these clam things here. Great, great. The um, great thing, one of the great things about, I don't know, I, I, I have a lot of, like, childhood memories of this. Now, some people think you should put bell pepper in there. I guess there's nothing wrong with that. Some people think that you could put onion and bell pepper in this. Hey, I'm good with that. But what I remember the classic way was basically pimentos, which now that I live in the South, it's like now we have like pimento cheese, which, hey, that works too for me. You need some unsalted butter. We're going to make a compound butter. You can use these. These used to be like really popular in the 70s. And then, I don't know, the butter police thing came in, <laughs> and they went away. But if you really think about it, you know, you remember you used to get like You'd order a steak in a restaurant, you'd get like maitre d' hotel butter or, you know, you'd get some wild butter, you know. Now, I don't know. I still like them. So I'm going to show you how to make a compound butter simply for these clams with pimento. But again, you could use anchovy, you could orange juice and zest, whatever knocks you out, okay. Parsley. The maitre d' hotel butter is basically parsley, the juice of lemon and or chives. Depends who you talk to. So uh, you got to get unsalted butter and soften it up. Then the great thing about this, you can do this in advance. And uh, you can just keep it in the ice box. And then when you're ready for a little compound butter, then you can uh, take it out and put some on your chicken, your steak, whatever you want. In this case, the clams. You want to rinse your clams really well. And I like these like little neck size for, to eat them raw or for this particular dish. The bigger they get, obviously, the tougher they are. Like, my mom gets these, like, real big ones. They're called coags. But you don't eat them raw. I mean, God, you... <laughs> yeah, you'd need, like, a shovel, you know, and... But anyhow, I won't go there. But if you do get them big like that, you know, she'll steam them or open them, chop them up. They're great for chowder, chopped up, or she'll, like, make a stuffing. They call them stuffies. Put them in there. These are what I like. Get a clam knife, and what you do is you gotta rinse them really good. You should always keep plenty ice on them to keep them cold, you know? And then what you wanna do is you wanna open them with your clam knife, kind of find it like this, and then you just use the pressure of your finger like that with the clam knife, and that's how you can shuck them like that, okay? Obviously, if you like have them bouncing around in the back seat of the car, you know, they're gonna be, uh, a little scared to open. And what you want to do is 
Oh, I love that. <laughs> then, you, for this particular dish, we're going to break that off, obviously. And then you kind of go underneath. You see, underneath the clam like that to sort of detach. Okay, and then they're like, they're ready for business here. I'm going to show you again. Look at that, huh? You want to keep the... I hate these... You know, when you go to these things, I don't like them like pre-opened. You know, it's, you know, that really it turns me off. You know, you go to an oyster bar, the clams have been open since like, you know, six o'clock in the morning. It's like, what? A, anyhow, don't get me started. You know I'm not opinionated, so. There we go, we'll get, find that little right in between the old cheek and gum and just like, use the pressure of your hand, okay? Now, you use a clam knife because it's really, it's very, very, it's dull. You know, it's just thin enough to get in there. So that's how you open them. All right, let's get, let's get to business. So we got them open now. You guys like clams? Yes. You guys like clams? Wait, where do you see this? So simple, too. All right, now, the butter's soft. Now what we're going to do, get it, make it, make sure it's really, this is now we like whipped butter. You see what you paid like 80 cents more a pound for? Whipped butter. Now you have whipped butter. I know, don't you feel very ripped off right now? <laughs> All right, here's how you finish it. You use a little bit of them pimentos and a little bit of the juice chopped up. Again, you could use bell pepper, you could use, you know, celery, onions, whatever. I'm gonna add a little parsley in mine, if that's okay with you. Keep Hilda happy. Hey, why not, I'm gonna add a little chives. That's the whole point I'm trying to make, you see? That's how simple the compound butter is. You want orange, put orange. You want lemon, put lemon. You want pasta, you want chives, you want pimento. You want about 89,000 cloves of garlic. You can put that in there too, right? Why not, right? You want some essence in there? You put some essence in there, right? All right. So now, Point taken. Now you get this all nice and mixed up. See, I generally do this. I just have like little race with myself, you know? Look, yeah, I just started higher. And lettuce into the head. Followed by rubber band and the stretch. Here comes bubble gum sticking to the outside. Done. See how quick that was? Very simple. Very, very simple. Now, what you're supposed to do with this now is you get some like plastic wrap, or a lot of the restaurants, they'll use this kind of, you know, this baking paper, and they'll take out that compound butter and they'll make a log, okay? You with me? And then they'll roll it up like that, nice, nice, okay? That's great. What I want to show you, though, is what we're going to do before we do that, is we're going to take our pimento butter, and then you put it right on the clam like that, you see? I know, and you got to, like, cover it. No hide and seek. You got to cover the whole deal. <laughs> Okay? Like that. But what I found growing up, how I like to finish him, I know you just go easy. You know, it's just, <laughs> just, you know, you know, easy does it. I'm trying to help them dairy farmers in Massachusetts, you know. So look, you see how I, what I'm doing here? You do that. The great thing is that when you're done with that, you can keep them in the icebox until your guests come over, and then you're ready to pop them in the oven. One more notch for those that are with me out there. What I like to do, I like to take a little piece of bacon, about so big, and put that like right on the top. All right, so what I'm gonna do is this. Since uh, everybody kind of seems hungry in here, I'm gonna finish butter them, and at least half of them with bacon. About 375, 400 degrees. We want them close to the top of the oven. When we come back, another notch! Stick around! Stop it!
Mark Debs and Cliff, everybody. All right, those of you just joining us, we're in the uh, New England zone right now. And uh, we buttered all the clams. We had some butter left. So if you have that, you can use plastic wrap, as I said, or the parchment paper. You want to kind of get a little pile of it in the center, then roll it up, twist the ends, and you can keep it in the ice box or in the freezer till the next time you want to do it. My friends over here, they said, boy, that would be terrific with oysters. And I said, oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> That would be good on just about anything, really. I love that. But oysters would be fantastic. We may have to, uh, if we get some time, do that. Just uh, in case, uh, you know, you don't think like we're really cooking here, that we're like flopping some turkeys or some clams. You can see how what we did is we left a couple no butter action. Don't let that bother you that you're going to have like those drippings over there. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with those drippings. So we're going to let them cook for a little while. You guys can keep an eye on them for me. <laughs> Going into another memory. As I said earlier, from the Cape, comes from the Portuguese, comes from the Italian. This is bacalhau, or salt cod. Now this is the steak of it, okay? This stuff is really salty. Don't think you'll be eating this, like, alone. I can tell. <laughs> I promise you. You got to do something with it. You see, it was a big part of business. Not only is it still in Portugal, number one place, especially in Porto, they salt all the fish, the codfish. But in the East Coast, way back to the 1600s, they were salting. That's big business for them, particularly, as I said, the Portuguese and the Italian cultures. Now, sometimes you'll see it so dry like this. Like when I go in a back home in Fall River, New Bedford, they get these like really thin pieces like that. Doesn't matter if it's thin, doesn't matter you smell that, huh? Like the ocean, huh? <laughs> so, uh, sm uh, smelling really good, Hilda. <laughs> so what you got to do, you got to get the salt out of it because that's what they do to preserve it. It's, you know, I don't care what you do with it. Let me show you. I recently um, had a whole bunch of codfish dishes that I was testing in with uh, my guys in New Orleans, and it's amazing. We had to soak this thing. I'm going to tell you the best way. People think that you should change the water every two hours, okay? Some people think you should do it in milk. I'm like, why waste milk, you know? Some people think that you should do it in buttermilk, that if you do it in buttermilk, it's okay. Whatever turns you on, okay? You're not going to hurt my feelings. What I do, I take it, and the best way that I found, unless you want to drive yourself crazy, you got to plan for this stuff. So you buy it, you got to soak it in water like this. Every two to four hours, you change the water. After you change the water, rinse it underneath the faucet. Then press the fish. Okay? You with me? There'll be a quiz at the end of the show here. <laughs> press the fish, put it back, fresh water, cover it again, ice box. Forget about it for about four hours. Even six hours, you know? It's going to take 24 hours. It's going to take about four processes like that, at least or the stuff will be unedible, I promise you. But if you can get it back and do it the right way, it's a food of love thing, you know? Not everything gets made in like 14 minutes and delivered, you know? <laughs> now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this awesome dish. Little memory here, check this out. I did the codfish four times for a total of 24 hours. Then it's amazing how this codfish will flake like this, and you should flake it making codfish cakes, uh, fritters, bacalhau, whatever you're going to make. You, you can flake it like this. You see that? Then you're ready to go. Here's what I'm going to start with right here. See little pieces? You flake it. All right. Now. <laughs> Some good olive oil in a skillet. You want to use nonstick, you can use nonstick. Some onion. I'm using green, excuse me, I'm using yellow and red bell pepper. That's only because that's what we had today. You know, if you've got green, use green. You only want to use green. You want to put celery, add celery. So, you know, it's, have some love, you know, relax. You might think you're building like some steamship or something, you know. Now, we're going to add a little salt. Nah, not too much. You're working with salt cod, right? You can always add. Common sense thing. 
So a little bit of salt, just so that it, see it's happy now. Pepper, fresh grade ground pepper like this. Can't insist on it enough. Now, Hilda, you know, she'd add some of this like pimentum weed, the stuff, to kick it up a few notches, you know what I mean? So we'll make her happy. She would probably would add some parsley at this particular point in the game right now, too. It's a Portuguese thing. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever mom wants, you know? All right, now, by the way, this is on about medium-high heat, okay? Very important. Drives me absolutely crazy. I see these people cooking. Everything is like full, full blast. I don't know where everybody got that stuff. That's why they got these things on these knobs. <laughs> You know, high, medium, medium, low. You know what I mean? Why? I don't know. It's, it's, you know, it's a love thing. You're in a hurry. I, I don't know. You can't, you can't cook like that all the time. Check your knobs out. That's what I say. <laughs> now, once this cooks like that, that's when we're going to add the salt cod in there now. We're going to make the salt cod happy, OK? Yeah, you smelling it right. Now, once this cooks, once the salt cod cooks for about five minutes, look, you want to deglaze it with white wine, that's what I would do. Okay, deglaze it with white wine. Then, what we're going to do now is this. Once it starts almost evaporating out, now you taste it. Does it need more salt? Does it need more pepper? Start letting it cool, and then I'm going to show you now what we're going to do. Now what we're going to do is this. We're going to add a little lobster meat to this, right? We're going to add, we're going to add some mashed potatoes to this. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, salt cod and mashed potatoes, perfect mix. Some green onions. You probably call them scallions. New Orleans, we call them green onions. We're going to mix this together. You're supposed to let this cool. You know, it's the guys and gals in Washington, you know. <laughs> let this, let it cool. All right, it's cool. <laughs> it's cool. All right, now when it's really cool, like it is right now, Okay? I mean, what do they think? Like, you're in the kitchen, like you got, like, some fan in your pocket or something that you're going to pull out? What am I, a technician? All right, look. You let it cool. If you need to add an egg, fine. What we're going to do is we're going to cool. We're going to shape these into little cakes. Seasoned flour. Oh! Oh, the flour's naked. It's not seasoned. Now it is, okay? It's happy now. Little there, little there, right? We're going to take it. Make little cakes, seasoned flour, egg wash, breadcrumbs, nonstick pan, olive oil when we come back. Oh, have I got another surprise for you. Don't touch that dial. We'll be right back. Doc Gensel, Chris. Just joining us, we're kicking up New England Fair a few notches tonight here on Emerald Live. And right now we've got these lobster and salt cod cakes. Just kind of getting happy in a little bit of vegetable or pomace sort of oil. And uh, make sure that your flour and egg wash breadcrumbs are seasoned, unless you're using them, you know, fancy 
kicked up breadcrumbs. People have a hard time. It's amazing how many emails and stuff that we get about how to f turn either fish or turn cakes. People are afraid of that because of the oil. Here's my suggestion. First of all, it's all in the right spatula, okay? That's why they call these things gadgets. It's only like a multi-million dollar business with all these kind of gadgets, but that's the truth. I mean, you don't see, um, you know, a carpenter like hammering a nail with like, you know, a chainsaw or, you know, some ax. He's got a nice hammer that he's doing that with, you know? So this one right here is built not only because the oil can get through, but see, it's got that little bend. Watch, let me show you. You kind of use that to your advantage and you just pick it up and then you can just use your hand like that to turn it. You see that? And it's like no burn. Also, remember what I was telling you earlier about the heat. Everybody thinks you just jack it up till the roof is going to blow off the house. It's like, look, turn them down. You know, it's like, what's your hurry? This is like a medium action right now. All right, now, we're going to turn these over. Oh, yeah, babe. Now, if for some reason you're still in that jacked up to the highest level mode, so now you're unsure if the middle of those cakes are really cooked, you can always take the pan, put it inside of the oven, okay, to make sure that it's cooked through and through. You with me so far? Yeah. Just checking. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to turn this heat down to low. That would be L-O-W. <laughs> okay, that would be the first notch on the stove. People bringing their pets in here. <laughs> now, got this on low. Let's go check while we're talking about the oven. Let's go check. Oh! Oh, yeah, these will work for me right here, babe. Can you see them, you? Do those look good to you guys? Okay, well, we're going to try to do two dishes at once here. Hang on with me. All right, these are low. These are low. Now, we use a little sea salt. How I like to serve these is just we'll put them on a platter like such. Don't go submerging them inside that salt. We're just using that as a little base. You see that? Okay. Now, they don't need really anything else. Serve them like that. You get the message, right? Oh, yeah, babe. I think the only thing that if you're going to serve anything with this, Here's what I was telling you earlier. Woo! <laughs> Show him. See, don't look, don't worry about it. What you do is you come back around and you make that food of love thing. You see that? You're with me like that? Ah, yeah, babe. Honey, can you do me a favor? Can you hand me one of them lemons right there, please? On the lower deck. Thank you. What's your name? Nicole. Hey, Nicole, thanks a lot. What I think that you should do <laughs> is you could just serve either sliced lemon, watch this, real quick. But what you can do is you can serve like a little lemon crown like this, right? You just kind of use, they got a knife that does that too, but we had that gadget. I don't know where it's at now somewhere in Yankee Stadium or something. <laughs> See? Lemon crown, you can dust it in a little bit of the essence like that. All right. There you have it, okay? Pimento clams. Looks good. Make some friends. Okay! Watch this. Classic tartar sauce. Very simple. Little caper, red onions, chopped pickles, parsley, onions, green olives. That's what I like in mine. You with me on that? Mayonnaise. Bam! I'm sorry. I just had to, had to do that. 
Mayonnaise, a little bit of mustard like this. You could add a little tarragon if you want. Classic tartar sauce, right? Little salt, pepper. There you have it, there's the classic tartar sauce, all right? Now, we got that ready. Beautiful. Now where are we going? Got some roasted sweet corn, add a little bit of tomato, red onion. This is when you want, you can fork a lemon. You just get a little lemon like that and fork it, you see? Just a few little juices like that, no seeds. You with me? Yeah. All right. Truffle oil, oh my God. Just a little. Again, little salt. Come on, you're sleeping. Little salt like that, some pepper. Here's the way what I like to do right here. Look at this, we'll just toss this real lightly. Now we get a roasted corn, kind of relish. Ah, let's add some color to it, right? Green onion, all right, very simple. Here you go, plate down like that. Traditional tartar sauce, lovely, lovely. Right? One cake. Bam, right? Little essence. Little roasted corn relish, just like that, for old time's sake, right? You guys are with me, right? All right. When we come back, some beautiful Maine blueberries, blueberry jam custard pie. Stick around. We'll be right back. Everybody, Doc Gibbs and Cliff. Yeah. Up. Oh, shame on you if you're just joining us. Unbelievable. We're kicking up some New England food. Had a little bit of those pimento buttered clams. They were pretty tasty. And uh, you guys haven't tried that yet, huh? Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. The gun is off. Yeah. Well, this isn't ahead. Yeah, permission. The salt cod and lobster cakes. Had a little bit of potato. Nice texture, huh, with the crumbs? That's why you could just flour them, but I like for this kind of texture, for to get floured, egg wash, breadcrumbs, seasoned, of course, and then that slow cooking so that the middle of that really kind of, uh, kind of cooks. Then we did a traditional tartar sauce used on anything from fish and chips to a lot of their different fishes that they do in New England. One of my favorite things from Maine are just these mussels here that steamed with some parsley and white wine, 30, 40 cloves of garlic chopped up, you know, a little onion. Woo, happy, happy, happy. And I was telling you earlier that uh, this is a haddock, and then they also have a smaller cod, but also that can come from haddock, a very New England fish dish that you guys probably know called scrod, right? And that's very, very simple. Basically, you could do that at home anywhere you could do that. You just get a nice piece of fresh codfish or haddock. The way that I like to do it, probably never heard of this, but I like to uh, take like Ritz crackers and put them in the food processor till they're almost fine, not powder, but like fine. Whatever kind of herb you like, basically for me it's parsley, maybe a little chive. And then you put melted butter until they get nice and moist. Sprinkle those crumbs on your filet of codfish or haddock and pop that in the oven maybe the juice of a half a lemon, knock your lights out, I'm telling you right now. Oh, they'll knock you in the next week. So simple. Oh, I'll make you happy, baby. <laughs> Another great thing from Maine, beside those mussels and the oysters, blueberries, right? Watch how simple this blueberry jam custard pie is. It's all in the egg yolks. Not egg whites or not eggs, egg yolks. It's going to make it rich. That's going to make the custard. And listen, when you crack those and you're going to keep them in a container like I just had them, you want to keep a piece of plastic wrap over them so they don't get all, like, nasty on top, you know? All right. 
That was milk, egg yolks. We're going to whisk those up. We're going to add some cinnamon in them. Pure vanilla, a little vanilla. And then we got to make it sweet, so we're going to add some sugar. That's all it is, the custard mix. You can make a pie crust, buy a pie crust, steal a pie crust, whatever you really want to do. Just make sure it's flaky. And I don't mean like, I mean <laughs> the real flaky, you know what I mean? Not the false flaky. You want to pre-bake that golden brown like this. Takes about 15 minutes. What you're going to do is this. You're going to take blueberry jam and paint the bottom of this, bottom of this crust. Oh, now you got me excited. We'll use it all. <laughs> so I'm going to spread it and paint the bottom of this crust. Then this mixture goes into the pie, OK? This mixture goes into the pie. 350 degrees, we're going to bake it for 30 minutes. When we come back, oh, my god, stick around. <laughs> Doc Gibbs. Just joining the shame on you. You paint the blueberry jam. It's that main blueberry jam. My main blueberry jam. Then the custard mix, and you pour it right over it, as I was explaining to you. See how the blueberry jam, when you just do that just right, it kind of acts as like a shield. You see that? Get it all in there. Yeah, you see? So it doesn't penetrate the bottom. The jam just kind of like seals it. 350, 30 minutes. Then you got to really let it cool because it's a custard pie. I suggest you do this the day before you're going to serve it. But here's how I would serve it. When it's ready. Also, this is a great pie out of the ice box because of the custard of it. So how I like to serve it is like this. I take a little wedge or a big wedge. And then what I do, sort of make sure that crust is going to come with me. Work with me, baby. Work with me. You see that, folks? Oh, wait. See how the, what the blueberry did right there? See what the blueberry did? It just stayed right on the bottom. Can you get a shot of that, you? See how it just stayed right on the bottom and you got the custard? Now, when I'm ready to kind of finish this, you can do it with ice cream, whipped cream. I like whipped cream. You put a little bourbon in there, you know? <laughs> Bad day, you put a lot of bourbon in there. A <laughs> little bit of whipped cream like this. And then it's not an overly sweet pie, as much sugar as you saw in there. So what I like to do is just kind of finish it with a little dusting like that, all right? Oh, I'm gonna give you one more trick, too. And then you can just kind of garnish it with a little bit of mint or whatever you have like that. That's how simple it is, folks, like that, okay? Very simple. All right, you guys. You can do it also. You can do it also with cranberry jam. I'm gonna give you a little quick little thing about this. The crew's gonna laugh when I tell them this. You know how they grate cranberries and they use, uh, you know, a grater when they're doing these cranberries. But you know what? Yesterday, we were talking about cranberries. We actually did a little show. And it's all in the bounce when it comes to cranberries. Trust me, look. Did you know that? No. Now you knew that about New England again. A little bounce in the cranberries. And for my friends here, great suggestion. Earlier they said, boy, these clams would be good. Sure would be good if you could do them with some oysters, too. Maybe like from Katuit. So uh, we kind of, in the commercial break, went and shuck a couple of oysters. Oh. 
little couture oyster like that. Just a simple little oyster. A little bit of green onions like that. Bam! Bam! Just like that. There you have it. I'm Emeril Lagasse. Thanks for joining me tonight. See you tomorrow, everybody!